Liu Chong, the Prince of Qin, is a new faction leader available with the Mandate of Heaven DLC for Total War Three Kingdoms. He is available in both the 182 and 190 campaign. Both campaign starting situations are rated as easy, so he is a good character for first time Three Kingdoms players. Liu Chong is a commander, so he excels at buffing and inspiring friendly troops and has access to higher quality melee cavalry later in the game. Liu Chong apparently is pretty obsessed with crossbows, and as such, his faction gets 10% range damage for crossbows and plus two starting rank for ranged units. His faction specialization is a trophy cabinet. We will go into this in more detail later, but the way it works is after you complete certain achievements in the campaign, different trophies become available. These trophies can be selected in the trophy cabinet to provide your faction with different buffs. Playstyle focus is majesty. Liu Chong must balance loyalty to his family, royal duties, and the emperor, as well as provide safety and stability to his people. During the campaign, you will be given choices between fighting for the empire or providing for your people. The choices you make will dictate the missions you get during the campaign. Liu Chong has access to two unique hybrid units, both of which have ranged and melee capabilities. Chin Peacekeepers are melee cavalry available for characters ranked 6 or higher. They work well as anti-missile units with good morale, good armor, ranged capabilities, and they encourage nearby units. Chin Royal Guards are crossbow infantry available for characters ranked 3 or higher. As they're equipped with crossbows and spear and shield, they're all rounder units with good morale, good armor, and heavy hitting missile attacks. The noteworthy character Liu Chong starts with is his friend Liu Jun. Liu Jun is a very important character in Liu Chong's campaign. He acts as a confidant and advisor that will guide Liu Chong during the campaign with different missions. From here, let's jump into the campaign map. We will take a look at the early game situation and possible paths forward. Decisions that you will need to make and ultimately skip forward later in the early game to see how Liu Chong's faction develops. The Prince of Qin. You're Liu Chong, a scion of the Imperial line. Having narrowly avoided the headsmen from improper worship of Yang Lao, you seek to prove your virtue to the Emperor. You are a master warrior and statesman, seeking to fan the flickering flames of the Han Dynasty. Your close friend and colleague, Liu Jung, has promised to aid you in your quest. So we need to build a land of prosperity, be wary of Yuan Shu to the south. Liu Jung will be your guide. Let's take a quick look at Liu Chang, Prince of Chen. So we have plus 15 expertise, plus 40 resolve, plus 25 authority. He has scare and then the plus 10% range damage for crossbows and plus two starting rank for all ranged units that we went over before. He starts with mobility, stone bore, clarity, dignity, and nobility unlocked. And one of my personal favorites, flexibility can be attained, obtained his first level up. He has just an, an exceptional war blade. He has his fancy armor and a pretty fancy horse. And then his advisor, guardian of the people, plus 25 resolve, plus 25 cunning, plus 15 authority, and plus 10% income from all sources. Unfortunately, he can't actually be the Heir of our faction and he starts with patience and binding fury one thing i do want to point out real quick before we get on to other things liu chong is not married and he does not have a faction heir so that's something you probably want to solve relatively soon you can look to try and marry from other factions but i've looked multiple times in the early game and i did not find any feasible options so you could just take a random wife so you at least birth some type of faction heir and then you could do some horrible things like divorce and try and get a better character or something like that that's really up to you we start with five territories in the central plain we have a small city with the farmlands attached, and then we have a town with farmlands and livestock farm. In terms of external threats, we have a tiny buffer between us and the Yellow Turban Rebellion. In terms of internal threats, you should always be wary when you have Yuan Shu on your border, and he is bordering our entire southern territory here. You have to be especially careful if you have looters or Yellow Turban Rebellions take over any of your territories, because Yuan Shu will very quickly swoop, swoop in and take over your territory to control themselves. You also start with an available trade route, so you have a couple choices in terms of trade agreements. Liu Chong has his own unique resource called Fortitude. Your Fortitude is a measure of your military prowess, your ability to inspire your allies and strike fear into the hearts of your enemy. Increase your Fortitude through winning battles and by inflicting greater casualties upon enemy forces than you inflict upon yours. So Fortitude essentially rewards you from doing really well in battles. So there's four different sections, Unsure, Steadfast, Devout, and Undeniable. 
and each status will have their own effect on unit morale, bonus experience, and replenishment. And all the way at the top, when you have it maxed out, all retinues are immune to scaring. Let's take a closer look at the trophy cabinet. This is Liu Chung's unique faction mechanic. So you have four slots for trophies. You start with one, and it gives plus 10 morale for melee cavalry. You can equip it. This essentially allows you to give out faction buffs depending upon your playstyle. Each of these trophies has a different achievement you need to do to unlock. So for example, this one you unlock by winning 15 battles while commanding the army. And that will give you plus 25% ammunition for your archers. One issue that you'll run into in the early game is that you have a bunch of assignments and administrative slots that you can't even fill because you don't have any characters on your roster. And you'll have to make a choice between upgrading buildings like I'm doing here and recruiting available candidates as they show up. On turn five, you will have three different looter armies spawn in your territory and this mission will trigger. Mission is for you to defeat these three armies and protect your territory. So as you can see here, I positioned my army in the farmlands because I knew exactly where the looters would spawn. This is what I recommend you doing. Having two full retinues should be enough to defeat all three. Just in case you haven't watched my other faction overview videos, I will quickly go over the Yellow Turban Rebellion. It has begun across the lands. The banners of the Yellow Turbans are being raised, hastened by the defection of Tang Zhao. A call to arms has gone up for the Emperor, and all across the land, troops are being gathered to defend the Empire from this threat, as brother fight against brother. The warlords of the Han restored the Mandate of Heaven. With rallying cries about a yellow sun, the rebels have shown their true face. These are mere vagrants. Wolves disguise themselves as sheep. Tyrants masquerading as saviors show the people who really has a mandate of heaven. Eliminate them for the glory of China. And then you just destroy all three brothers and you get some monies. So up here is the mandate war kind of progress bar. So it shows the yellow turban win condition is they have to capture Liu Yang and control 50 territories uh, between all yellow turban factions. And the way you beat the mandate of heaven as an empire loyalist is to just destroy the three faction heads of the yellow turban factions. So in terms of strategies, your options, I think for Liu Chung are pretty straightforward. You're going to want to march up and take on the yellow turban rebellion head on, probably in the hopes of doing a land grab up here amassing a small pocket of land up here to either trade off for more resources or to just try and hold here and hold chen there's not much opportunity for leo chung to go against the empire and kind of do any feuds against any other warlords kind of feel like the empire as a whole really depends upon leo chung to march up and take the front brunt of the force against the yellow turbans so what i would recommend doing is getting a full army and just marching up you're gonna need to defend against these this yellow turban army right here so they don't take your farmland and then there's some opportunity to move into dong over here and then hop over on this side either go west or north as you see fit. During the campaign, Liu Chong will be forced to make decisions between his family or the people. The repercussions for your choices are not that big in terms of what happens in the campaign. I think it's kind of more role-playing at this point. Um, I know one decision line will dictate what type of missions you get based on developing your economy or gaining bonuses when you fight, things like that. So this one has you choosing between your family, which is the emperor or your people. And as you can see, it's uh, you get a positive diplomatic relationship bonus or you get a negative diplomatic relations hit. Uh, but you also get plus 15 to your public order, which is useful to combat, um, you know, yellow turban stuff. In this case, I'd probably just choose people because, well, let's be honest, in about six years, the emperor is going to be no more. So, you know, there's that. Um, anyways, I'm not going to go over every single mission that pops up. They just kind of pop up periodically and they have you make these decisions. Uh, so from here, I'm going to skip forward a few turns so we can kind of see the natural way uh, Leo Chung's faction develops if you march north and take on the yellow turbans. So we've skipped forward to turn 26, and as you can see, we have a faction destroyed, Zhang Bao. I just finished chasing down his army to finish off what was left of it. Looking at the Mandate War progress bar, 
Zhang Liang was defeated earlier, again by my army, and the Yellow Turbans are down to a total of 17 territories. As you can see, it's just the eldest Zhong brother over here, kind of all in the corner. He's defeated Liu Bei, Han Fu is on the ropes here. It's just our territory that's kind of blocking the rest of China from him. So our main objective here still is to push forward and just capture as much of this territory as possible. There are a couple other friendly armies moving around down here that could potentially push north and take over some territory, but I feel like we're in a pretty good position to at least capture a lot of this top territory. That will put us in kind of a funny position here in turn 190 when kind of the empire fractures apart, as we'll have our Qin territory down here, separate from our bigger territory up north. So we'll have to figure out exactly how you want to handle it. You could have just abandoned down here, you know, if you have some treacherous somebody, neighbor, possibly Yuan Shu attack you from the south, you could essentially just trade some of this land away and go to peace and consolidate your hold on the north here, or or you could just try and fight and hold all of it. It really just depends upon your, your play style and how aggressive you want to be in the early game and what fights you want to pick. So very quickly, as you can see, our fortitude bar is pretty much maxed out. I feel like it was very easy to keep this up as you just keep fighting. And then we have a bunch of trophies unlocked. You can see up here. And we have plenty more to go, but we filled up our trophy cabinet very quickly. We have one that gives plus 10 morale for melee cavalry. I believe we start with this one. Plus 10 bonus experience for units per season. Plus 10% range block chance for range units, which is really cool because we're using a lot of crossbowmen. And then finally, plus 10 morale for crossbow units. So that's pretty much it. That's everything I wanted to go over for Leo Chung. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Subscribe for more content. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time.